Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have been AWOL, I am sorry, but I got out of the habit of making videos and just didn't really know what to talk about and ran out of ideas and just had a break. But I have been really missing it. And then my friend Connor from The Closet tagged me in his recent video that he created, the tag, which is my favorite, I'll, I'll put the video down below, my favorite designer pre-loved items like pick something that you found that was super rare that you couldn't find any other way or a unicorn piece or it was great value way to try something or whatever now I don't and I said this to him I said thank you for tagging me and it's a great way for me to get back into making a video when you get tagged it really prompts you because it, I think it's like nice and polite to like respond and do the tag in a timely manner and also like if you don't really can't think of anything to make a video about then it kind of gets you back into it in an easy accessible way so it's great, but I don't actually have anything pre-loved at the moment. And I'm going to talk a bit about my feelings around pre-loved in general at the end of the video. But I just thought I would talk about two pieces that I had that were great, that I actually really regret sometimes selling. I'm not sure, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, with bags, I try not to get too attached and I have this kind of revolving door thing of like, if it doesn't work, I don't just keep bags to look at on a shelf. I also like to keep my collection relatively like compact. So if I buy something new and it sort of does the same job as something I've got and I'm not really, if it's a clear favourite and I'm not reaching for the other one anymore, I'll just get rid of it. Especially if it's something I can replace. I have learned uh, from a few things that I've had um, that I've sold, I've kind of regretted it because I can't really get them again. Anyway, so I have only ever bought... I think that those were the only high-end, like expensive pre-loved purchases. I will just describe the process and why I bought them pre-loved and what the item was. And I have got video footage of these items in my 2019 handbag collection, which is still up on my channel. If you go to that video, you can find these two pieces. Um, and actually looking for um, that footage and taking screen grabs, for to put at the end of this video or to they might appear here if I can work out how to do it I'm rubbish you know I'm rubbish for that stuff um just looking at me talking about those two bags and like holding them and showing them to you I was like why did I sell those whoops so yes I have got two great pre-loved pieces to sh talk about and I kind of regret that I don't have them now to show you so very quickly, the first piece was a Chanel wallet on a chain in the boy style. I just couldn't find it, the version I wanted in store and it didn't go away. Like a good year after I started looking for it new in boutiques, I was just still really, really wanted a boy style wok. I'd had one before in a different leather that I had sold and um, I just couldn't find it. So I realised I'm actually going to have to get this pre-loved and I've never been that comfortable with pre-loved because I've never trusted my judgment. I've always thought that the whole authentication thing sounded like it might be a hassle. Um, it really isn't, but um, I've just always preferred the box fresh, the whole boutique experience of getting something new. So on this occasion, I realised that if I'm going to have that item, I'm going to have to get it pre-loved. And I wasn't actively hunting it, but I was just browsing now and then. And then a friend of mine found this bag um, on a site. And um, I don't know if that business is still going. So I'm not going to mention what, because I don't know if it's a good company. I might have just got lucky. I don't really like to endorse or bash a business just based on like one experience. But yeah, it was a proper physical. It was in Europe and she had social media and stuff, but she had a physical store that you could go to. And I found reviews of her store and everything on online. And I also asked around and other people in this kind of community had purchased from her, sold to her and had good experiences. Um, it came with an authentic, authenticity like certificate thing, but I also got it authenticated. I had to pay slightly over retail, but at that point I was prepared to pay like 200 euros over retail just because I really wanted the piece. Um, the leather was great. It was like matte mini grain caviar. It was perfect. It had everything in the full set. And I really enjoyed that bag. The only reason I don't have it now is not because of the fact it was pre-loved or um, there was anything wrong with it. It was just something that I wore so much that I actually got sick of it because I over kind of used it. I don't know if you can relate to that, but like anytime I wanted a small bag and I was exclusively obsessed with everything had to be crossbody then. I've really moved away from that now. 
but at the time it was like a small bag crossbody night out casual it just fitted so many a wok just fits so many situations for me so i probably wore that bag like two or three times a week for uh, i can't remember two years and then i was just like not reaching for it and i was bored of that around the same time that i fell out of love with the chanel reissue i got bored of that ruthenium hardware which i found on chanel pieces just to me and it might be a phase i might love it again so don't be offended if you've got anything like this i sometimes find the distressed leather with ruthenium hardware it's a rocky grungy look and it's that i don't really dress like that or it doesn't really go with my style and i've gone a bit more girly and a bit more classic in the last couple of years so i just stopped reaching for it and i prefer like a normal like a champagne gold or a, or a silver or a normal gold that's shiny kind of like polished hardware and just the boy style of it i just had an itch to get something in that boy style and then having used it for a couple of years i just got bored of it and so that's why i sold it but it was still a great pre-loved buy because i wanted it for so long and then when i finally scored it it was like oh my god i've got this piece and also i had made another pre-loved purchase like two months three months before from the us where i'd had to pay import charges and everything like that from um a seller that lots of people recommended an instagram seller and the bag had a flaw she didn't know i honestly believe she didn't know but on the when you open the like flap um which i've got nothing here to really show you but on the flap there was like a slit where it actually ripped and literally i showed her video footage of it the day that i got it but it's such a hassle to return something to the us and um then claim back the import duty because when you reject a product you can actually get your import duties that you paid back but it involves a lot of paperwork and a massive delay so i waited for the like i just had my refund and everything and then this piece came along so it was just like meant to be and i really enjoyed it for a time but i don't have it anymore so i'm if you want to see this piece or the speedy that i'm gonna talk about in a minute um, they both appear in my 2019 handbag collection video and I talk about them in there. So I just thought I'm not going to cut up that footage and put it in here. I, may, I might just stick a couple of photos of what I'm talking about at the end. But yeah, if you want to see more, then oh, they're in pre-loved buy that was really good was um, I bought from a friend a Speedy B25 in monogram made in France. Perfect. That she'd only had for a couple of months and just wasn't reaching for it. I don't know if at the time she felt that the 25 was too small for her daily needs and she ended up buying 30s. She's a real speedy collector. She's got a lot of speedies in different canvases, classics, bandoliers, and she just didn't, I think she ended up rebuying one, but at the time she just thought, I don't really want the 25. And I've always wanted, to, I had always wanted to try the 25. I'd always had 30s. In Damier Bean, I'd had like two, no, I'm on my second um, Damier Bean 30. And I go from, liking the bigger the 30 to really missing having the 25 so i kind of buy and sell them every couple of years at the moment i don't have a 25 in either canvas and i have two Loewe puzzle bags which is why i haven't repurchased a speedy book because I, I think they're very comparable the 25 and the Loewe in terms of carry options and size and stuff um but that was a great transaction because there was none of that worry about authentication or or is it in good condition because it was a friend that I trusted she offered me a great price I would have made a bit of saving on buying it retail and for a monogram piece she had had it and it was out in her like dressing room or whatever um getting a little bit of sunshine and it was just starting to get a little bit of early patina so it didn't have that box fresh white fascetta so I could enjoy it straight away without getting through that beginning bit when you're like scared to touch it because you don't want to get like oil marks or water drops on it so it just it was really thick supple canvas amazing canvas and I have gone to the boutique and looked at Speedy B25s in monogram again since and they've just been like puckered or thin feeling and the, the price they are now I highly regret letting go of that bag I actually cannot explain to you what I was thinking I can't even remember my reason I think I was just having a massive overhaul of my collection at the beginning of the pandemic if you remember I literally sold like 10 bags and replaced them with nine or ten bags 
either completely different or like different sizes or whatever. And that one, my I sold both of my Speedy B 25s. I sold the Abeen one because I had the got my husband bought me a 30 as a present and I thought they're just too similar. I shouldn't have sold that either. But the monogram one I loved to use in summer when I'm not as into a bean as just an, a really casual little summer bag. It's so classic. Um, I think I had one of my phases of kind of not being into wearing monogram because I felt it's a bit showy. And I think that was probably what was going on. You know, we weren't going out much where we, we were. I was going to the grocery store with some sort of like cheaper handbag that I could wipe. And we had hand sanitizer and it was all like that. And I just went a bit nuts. I can't really think of another explanation but would I buy it again I don't know because I paid like 700 pounds to a friend for a beautiful made in France speedy b25 and now I'd have to pay nearly twice that for one god knows if it would be a good one or if it'd be wonky or you know I don't know I really don't know but I do miss it and it is a lovely classic little bag and actually I've changed my mind about I used to have a problem with monogram when the vachetta got a bit darker and the piece didn't look as new. And now I've started to embrace that actually, it's not everything, but certain things look more chic. And monogram, Louis Vuitton monogram to me now looks more nonchalant and more casual and more low key when it's old. When you see people with like a vintage speedy say 30 not bandolier just the classic one i saw a few in rome with really dark patinaed vachetta and they're just wearing it like really casual like it used to be their mum's bag and she's given it to them and they're just wearing it with like vans and ripped jeans it's just so cool and i get that now and at the time i was same with my pochette mati in monogram when the vachetta looked a bit the deeper patina i thought oh this doesn't look so new and because the push-up material to me, a lot of people think it's really casual. I think it looks quite bougie with the S-lock and all that. I was like, no, I want the on prom one because I want it to stay looking smart. But with the Speedy, I should have just kept it and like used it until I was like 80. But you know, you live and learn, don't you? But yeah, those two pieces were both pre-loved experiences that were really good. And they're, I can't, I think that's about it. I don't even think I've had many more pre-loved I'm not a big pre-loved buyer and I see people's reveals and I and the things that people have in their collection that are pre-loved and I honestly just think good for you. You found something at the right price, in the right condition. I just don't seem to have that luck. Like on the whole, apart from those two experiences, when I've looked at pre-loved because I can't find something like with the Chanel Walk or when I'm just looking to see if I can make a saving off the retail price, it never seems to stack up for me. Um, whereas I know quite a lot of savvy shoppers in this community that are like, oh, I bought this Cartier uh, bracelet and it's in brand new condition and I saved like a thousand dollars. I'm like, that never happens to me. So it's just not my thing. My thing is that I like to have the, even though it's not always great, but sometimes it is great. I like it if it's for a special occasion, I like to go with my husband or go with friends and have that memory of going in that boutique and buying um, or buying online because I want to try the product at home and have an easy way to return it. I know that sometimes the buying process is just not as straightforward when it's pre-loved because if you're not buying from like a big like fashion file or whatever, if you're buying from an individual, there's no return allowed. And, you know, I've been a seller more of pre-loved than I have been a buyer. And I because I'm nervous about buying pre-loved, I try to think like that when I sell something. So I've always tried to give people time, answer any questions, give them more details, because I appreciate that, you know, when you're spending a lot of money and you're not buying it from the brand, you're trusting an individual or a small, like, social media site seller. It's just, there's more layers of complexity there, but it can work, but you just have to do your homework. And this is definitely not a video explaining to you how to buy a pre-loved, because I, I really have very little experience. But if you research it, there's lots of other people who've done videos about how to have good experiences of buying pre-loved, how to avoid the pitfalls of getting conned, or just what to look for, what processes to go through to make sure that you're checking everything. So I suggest you do that, but you can, um, 
like Connor showed in his video, you can get, um, there can be great buying experiences where you make a saving from the retail price and everything's exactly the same as if you bought it from the store. So why not? But those have been my two positive like experiences of buying pre-loved. I don't happen to have the items anymore, but that doesn't take away from the fact that they were good transactions. So thank you for tagging me. I enjoyed chatting about this today. So it's got me back into filming and um, I'm going to tag a couple of people in the description box down below. Um, and they, you may have already been tagged, you may have already done it, I apologise. But there are a couple of people where I'd love to see what they would pick. Um, and they, I'm not even sure, like some of the people I'm going to tag, I don't even know if they bought anything pre-loved, but they could just talk about maybe their thoughts on pre-loved and why they haven't then bought anything pre-loved. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point, so I'm out. I'm going to be back because um, I'm actually blocked filming. Um, in my next video, I'm going to share my new pink bag with you guys, which is this Marc Jacobs tote and my kind of first impression review of that. So if you would like to see that, then come back to my channel because that will be up in a day or two as well. Take care, guys.